So this is my uh, latest project. This is going to be a big build. I'm definitely not going to be able to do this in uh, one video because I also want to uh, split the building up from the uh, testing video as well. But basically what I want to do is make a uh, foldable and portable uh, satellite dish because as a few people have commented on recent videos, uh, you can't beat a uh, parabola, which is a satellite dish, and a cantenna for long distance and that is uh, perfectly true you can't beat it there's nothing I've built that will even come close to beating a uh, parabola and a uh, cantenna but uh, you know whether the cantenna and the uh, biquad in combination uh, works better is uh, a little bit debatable but we can try that in the future as well and have a uh, bit of a shootout but uh, this is an idea that I've had for quite some time is to take a umbrella and basically replace the material on that umbrella with some of this uh, fly screen here this mosquito netting and uh, produce a foldable collapsible uh, parabola that we can use out in the field uh, we can fold it down so it's nice and compact it's nice and light so we can carry it uh, you know uh, quite easily rather than a big heavy uh, satellite dish and uh, I've always wondered whether this would actually work or not. Now I have seen over the years on the internet where people have taken an umbrella and lined the inside with uh, aluminium uh, cooking foil uh, you know to come up with uh, something like that but I want to use this because uh, it should make it a lot more permanent, a lot more versatile and should last for uh, years to come whereas sticking aluminium foil on the inside you know it's not really uh, a permanent thing but uh, when I'm doing this as well, one thing you need to note about an umbrella, your typical umbrella is not a parabola, it's uh, basically just a reflector. Now this uh, umbrella that I've got here is a parabola, it's uh, for photography, for uh, a flash setup where you want to bounce the light back onto the subject and this is a true parabolic umbrella. So this is the umbrella now that it's been extended and this is the smallest one that I could find on eBay. It didn't cost a lot of money, I think it was just over £20 uh, around that uh, mark. But uh, I did find some smaller ones that were from China and they didn't look like they were a uh, parabolic reflector. And uh, normally you can tell is because a true parabolic umbrella like this one here will have at least double the uh, ribs that a normal typical umbrella will have and that's how it maintains the uh, parabolic shape by having uh, much many more ribs than a uh, standard umbrella so I picked this one up it's already got this uh, reflective um, like paint or something like that on the inside uh, this is no good it's not going to direct any kind of uh, radio waves because basically it's not metallic so what I want to do is disassemble this umbrella use the material that's here at the moment as a pattern to cut out my uh, mosquito netting and then replace the uh, material here with the mosquito netting and then hopefully I've got a foldable uh, parabolic uh, dish here that we can use out in the field that uh, will collapse up you know you can carry it around a lot easier than a full-size uh, satellite dish and hopefully it'll do the job just as well so I'm just disassembling the umbrella now and I did think that these uh, metal end tips here were glued onto the uh, fiberglass ribs but they're not, they're just held in place with the uh, tension of the umbrella itself and it's all just stitched on there so I'm just going around with a uh, craft knife and uh, cutting them free and saving them because I'm going to be using these end tips again obviously and uh, for the rest of the umbrella it's just held on in uh, two places along the rib with uh, a couple of stitches so it's uh, really easy to uh, disassemble. So once you've got uh, the rest of the fabric uh, unpicked from the stitching around the ribs it's just held in place at the uh, top here with uh, this screw cap that holds uh, all the top in place there with uh, you know vice like pressure so really construction wise it's pretty damn simple. So I've got the segment pinned down to the uh, meshing here it was a lot easier to uh, pin it down than use any kind of tape because then I can uh, see the outline where I need to cut more clearly and I'm just going to use a pair of uh, normal scissors here but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, leave a hem of about five millimeters around 
this uh, segment because what I'm going to do is fold it over so uh, we've got no sharp edges so I'm going to cut about five millimeters away from the outside edge of this segment so I've got this one to do and then I've got another 15 to do so now that we've got the shapes cut out I'm just using my uh, long steel ruler here just to bend the, uh, bend the sides up again so we've got a nice smooth edge to this so it's not so rough and uh, also add a little bit of strength because this is where we're going to be connecting each panel together so doubling it over adds a little bit more strength and also uh, you know produces a nice edge on the sides as well and now I'm just using a rolling pin just to flatten them out a little bit more so I've been working away for quite a few days on this on and off and there's probably about 14 hours of labour gone into uh, getting this uh, to this stage here. I did find that working with the panels in groups of four made it a lot easier to manage and uh, I've got the final panel here that I need to stitch into the rest of the uh, mesh here to uh, create that uh, umbrella um, you know over the top but um, it has been uh, uh, quite a lot of hassle and really really slow work stitching this together I'm glad that I use cotton and not the uh, copper magnet wire that would have tangled up a little bit too much not sure if you could use a uh, sewing machine for this to speed things up and make it a little bit neater or not uh, you know you could end up uh, mashing up the uh, aluminium threads in here or you could end up getting it all caught up in your sewing machine and just having a tangled mess but uh, using a sewing machine would certainly uh, speed up this process but uh, there's a lot of labour going into this and uh, you know a lot of time consuming laborious work to get it to this stage but now I've just got this final panel to stitch into the rest of it so I've got the majority of the stitching out of the way now we've got the uh, basic shape sorted I still want to stitch in a few places just to add a little bit more strength I've also been adding some super glue uh, down on the stitching as well to give it some uh, you know a little bit more strength because there's quite a lot of tension in this when the uh, umbrella is open to its full extent so what I'm going to do now is sew in these little uh, end caps uh, onto the uh, bottom corners of the uh, umbrella mesh now and then we can do a, a test fitting and see how it all you know kind of lays with the umbrella itself so I'm going to need to replace the metal rod, the uh, centre rod of the umbrella and uh, I was looking round in my workshop for some kind of uh, plastic tubing but uh, I could only find this dowling here, it's 8mm dowling and uh, what I've done is uh, I've cut it off to the focal length of the umbrella and I've worked that out using a little program which I'll uh, leave a link in the description but basically this is the focal length of the uh, parabolic umbrella when it's uh, extended out to its fullest which is a little bit shorter than the metal rod itself so I've got another piece of dowling here and what I've done I've basically threaded out the middle of this piece of dowling here and put a little uh, nylon thread onto this one so then I can screw this in and then it uh, when I uh, collapse the umbrella it will all collapse down this tubing and it will hold it all together but when I want to use it to do some Wi-Fi scanning I can just unscrew that and then I can connect my uh, you know my antenna to the end of that and it's uh, you know at the exact focal length but uh, basically these uh, catches here I'm going to need to replace something onto uh, the wooden dowling here and I'm just going to do it simply by uh, using a uh, split pin through the middle of there or you know again something plastic hopefully through the center of there so I've drilled a hole through there and also on here there's a little stopper as well a little plastic stopper so I've removed that and I've drilled a hole here in my uh, wooden dowling so I can glue that in place when I get this fitted and uh, this was uh, the metal one was held in by uh, just a little pin through here onto the uh, top part of the umbrella so basically what I'm going to do because my uh, dowling fits pretty snugly I'm just going to put a little bit of epoxy on the end of this and then push it in and let the epoxy set and that should do a good job of holding this in place so here's the finished antenna I'm having to shoot this on uh, my backup camera just because my backup camera has a uh, much wider lens so I'm able to get the uh, full size of this in one shot I did decide to paint this because it just hided a multitude of sins with my uh, pretty poor stitching but uh, the stitching is doing its job 
it was just a little bit messy and you know it has taken me quite a few days of stitching to uh, put this together and that was the uh, most laborious job of uh, doing this was stitching all those panels together everything else went together quite smoothly and here's a closer look how I've uh, connected this to the tripod it's just very simple I had to extend the threads out on the uh, umbrella at the top there a little bit so I used a long uh, nut as you can see there and just a little bit of uh, threaded bar and connected that to a uh, right angle bracket that I cut down and then I tapped out one of the holes on the right angle bracket so I could connect it up to uh, a tripod thread but uh, it's not as heavy as what you may think I mean uh, the meshing itself is uh, pretty thin stuff and it's doing a good enough job holding that in place and I would have liked to have got rid of uh, all that metal on the center as well all these uh, little uh, metal hinges I would have liked to have got rid of them I'm uh, pretty sure it would perform better without them uh, blocking the signal into the uh, cantenna there but uh, if you got a 3d printer I don't suppose it'd be too much of a job to uh, 3d print some of them and replace them but uh, without that it would uh, be uh, quite difficult for me to replace them with some plastic parts that wouldn't interfere with the wave so much and here's a close-up of the uh, cantenna feed point that I've made for this uh, little project then it's uh, a little bit shorter than normal you've seen me make uh, one of these uh, horn type and uh, cantennas on the channel previously but uh, you don't need a really long uh, cantenna when you're using it with a satellite dish because basically you're guiding all the uh, waves into one small point so you don't need the length with the cantenna so this one uh, is uh, about uh, 74 millimeters in diameter it's a smooth can which also helps and uh, I've put a uh, horn rim on the top there as well I've also because uh, this is where the uh, dowel goes through that uh, connects it to the uh, umbrella there um, because this is a plastic lid off a different can uh, there was a little bit of flex in there when uh, you have the weight of the card and the can on the end of that doweling so I just used some straws epoxied those in here just to give it a bit more strength and just covered it over with some uh, black gloss paint so let's give this a go then let's give it a quick scan and I'll start rotating the antenna very slowly 360 degrees so we're certainly getting good signal strength on a lot of those uh, access points but I'll have a browse through them in a moment So let's have a quick look and a browse through, see how many access points we actually got. You can see there we've got 63 access points and a lot of those access points seem to be a pretty good signal strength. Just browsing through them, most of them are in the uh, 70s and above. So the Wi-Fi umbrella did perform a lot better than I uh, initially thought it would because I thought with the uh, quite thin aluminium meshing the front to back ratio would be uh, quite high whereas uh, a more traditional satellite dish it's made of much more thicker material that means uh, it reflects more of the microwaves back onto the uh, feed point but uh, certainly uh, this performed really really well and uh, performed a lot better than you would using that uh, small cantenna on its own anyway so it's definitely working and uh, you know I'm really pleased with how this has turned out I may build another one in a couple of months time now that I've uh, built one I'm pretty sure that building a second one I'll be able to get it a little bit neater but uh, for a first attempt it's uh, turned out rather well it wasn't too difficult as I say it was just a little bit laborious just stitching all that mesh together but uh, once you've got that out of the way the rest of the build and the modifications are really quite simple and yes in case you're wondering it does indeed uh, fold back up uh, not quite as neat and compact as the original fabric of the umbrella but still uh, compact enough to make it uh, quite portable especially when you compare it to a satellite dish of the same diameter
So if you did enjoy the video, please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up. Any comments or questions, drop them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. I'll also put a link in the description to the uh, little parabolic uh, program that I used to find out the feed point of this by taking the diameter and the depth of this. So uh, you can download that if you want to uh, copy what I've done here. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.